Good day. Uh, I hope you'll forgive the subdued light. Um, the purpose of this video is not to actually see me, it's to it's to see what I'm doing. Um, and in this particular case I would like to show you a, a different method of using uh, flint and steel um, to make fire. Um, now you may have seen this method um, done before um, but I haven't personally made a video of this method myself. I had originally when I came across this method believed it to be a modern method. Um, since then I've done some research on it and, uh, and actually found a image of a painting, a 15th century painting um, in a church in France of Joseph and Mary in a barn and Joseph is using this method to light a candle in a lantern. Um, so, uh, so obviously this is a period method and I've no reason to believe this method did not continue on from the 15th century into the 18th century. Um, I'm going to show you using this method um, with some uh, plant tinder, um, not charred cloth, um, because charred cloth was uh, generally reserved for uh, in the home and and on board ship. The gunners used to use uh, used to use charred cloth, um, charred tow rag. Um, but uh, woods runners, anybody that's uh, living outdoors would have used plant tinders and not charred cloth. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, how it's done. Now normally when I make fire I have a tinder box and I hold the steel in my left hand and I hold the flint in my right hand and I strike sparks downward into the tinder box to catch sparks on the tinder. Um, once it's caught then I get some kindling and I add to the to the smouldering tinder in the tinder box and I blow it into flame. Um, after I've done that I close the lid on the tinder box and then that tinder is there again to use later on. This method, however, that I'm going to show you here is fairly uh, economical um, tinder-wise um, and generally it would probably only be used for lighting candles but it could be used for lighting fire. Um, the main thing you will need with it is a spunk, um, a sulphur-tipped match um, to to uh, make flame from the smouldering tinder. You can, after the tinder is smouldering, um, add it to a, a nest of dry kindling. It would be dry grass or something similar and blow that into flame. To make that method um, better to ensure that you actually make fire that way it is probably a good idea to add more tinder to the nest because the piece of tinder you are holding as I'll show you in a minute um, is very small and it will burn out very quickly if you're using um, a spunk then it, it doesn't matter because it shouldn't take long to light it but if you're going to make fire with it without using the spunk then you may need to add tinder to the nest to the kindling nest anyway I won't say any more about that I'll show you the method now because I usually hold the steel in my left hand and the flint in my right hand in that way I have more control over it and I'm used to doing it that way 
So doing it this way, what I'm doing is I'm reversing by holding the flint in my left hand and the steel in my right hand and I'm still striking downward and this time I'm striking downward with the steel because I want the sparks to go upward not downward if you strike the, if you strike the steel downward with the flint the sparks go down but if you strike the flint with the steel striking down then the sparks will go up so let's just see how this works there we go took a few strikes to get it but uh, There it is, can you see that? There we have the match sulfur tip match or spunk and with that we can light a candle Okay, so that's the method. Holding the flint in the left hand with the, the plant tinder on top of the flint and then with the steel in my right hand because I'm right handed and striking down against the flint with the steel making the sparks go upward. Okay, of course the, obviously the sparks that, that miss will, will fall downward anyway but it's directing the sparks directly on to the tinder by doing it in this way. Okay, thanks for watching.